Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Enigmatica 6 Expert. And in today's episode, we dive a little bit into Botania. Just getting ourselves some petal apothecaries and some pure daisies to turn some flourishing archwood into living wood. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, so today we were meant to go to the end. Now, I thought I was going to have to go get some silk uh, moth nests and all that. These guys up here. Turns out you can actually make them. You told me that down in the comments and we figured it out while streaming then as well. So we can actually just make these. Now, the plan was to start nature's aura and do some beehives, but I think I'm actually going to hold off on that. Because, of course, you do need Brilliant Fiber. Now, Brilliant Fiber required the Silk Fiber, which is why we needed the, the Moth. But, for to be honest, with apiaries, yeah, they would be really cool to have. But I don't think I'm just ready to set up bees. I'd love to get bees going. But I have two more hives, like, ready to go in here. All I have to do is just put a nest down on a campfire. And there's actually one bee I do want to put in there right now. Which I just remembered about and that's the sooty bee so if i grab myself a nest just grab out a spruce nest and then a campfire uh i think i might need some redstone and a repeater if i haven't already set up the um harvesting for it i'm going to need a factory hopper can i actually make one of those do we have enough uh Apparently not. Something must have glitched out there. Okay, yeah. Another factory hopper is enough for now. Uh, so that's grand. So one of those was to collect the items. And we'll just grab ourselves a basic chest. Uh, I mean, a gold chest will do. I actually had to upgrade my storage even more. So I've got a lot of gold chests down. Because, of course, I'm out of diamonds. Because I'm pretty sure all this wine and beer and stuff I got from a tomb is taking up a lot of space. I can't really expend my chests any further. Maybe one more row with all I can go. But that's it. We're going to have to look into a different storage system or maybe go down deeper. Anyway, so let me just get this B set up going and then I'll show you everything that we managed to get done during the live stream. Now, one thing that I've got and it's amazing. We got at the very start of this live stream. And by the way, if you want to watch the live stream that we've done where we built all this stuff, the link for that will be in the pinned comment down in the description. So what I've got here is a ritual brazer. Got myself a load of source jars. And what's pretty much happening is I need, I put this tablet of flight. It's pretty cheap. Just cloud in a bottle. You get this by flying in the air and collecting air in a glass bottle between Y26 and 132. Just click the air. You get some cloud in the bottles. I grabbed myself about a half a stack to add a stack of it. And then I was able to make myself this tablet of flight. Do the ritual by putting on this ritual brazer, which is quite cheap, actually. Uh, it's just a pedestal and some gold or brass. And pretty much you just put the ritual on this guy, right click to activate. And then when you jump into the air, you get this effect of flight for about a minute and a half. If you just get it. And it pretty much gives you it creative flight. And you get infinite of it as long as you're within range of this guy. And there's enough source in your jars. As you can see, we have plenty of source the fact that we can pretty much get infinite creative flight so this uh, hive is almost completely set up so let me just grab this nest and put it down so put you campfire nest you don't have the scraper so i'm gonna have to get the scraper but if i just do this i need to grab myself a door now so we fly home grab ourselves a door and also um we were meant to do the under garden boss but i think i'm gonna hold off on that i think i'm gonna dedicate a whole episode to just adventuring. So that would be going back to the Undergard and defeating a load of bosses and flying off to these big massive structures down here and exploring all of like whatever loot is inside them. Uh, where is it? It's somewhere down here. Here it is. We'll go and explore this place. Apparently, I think this is from Guns N' Roses because we did a fly to it at on stream and I got an achievement, something to do with Guns N' Roses mod. So I think it's from that. Could be wrong. 
But yeah, we'll be going exploring that, looting the entirety of it, going down to the rogue dungeon. So we might have one or two episodes of just exploring. I forgot the door. Damn it. I was also thinking instead of having a door on the front right here, just having like some eternal glass, which will pretty much allow me to walk through the glass, but not let mobs pass through. I was thinking maybe to do that, but I think I like my door set up. Uh, damn, which door do I have set up? I think it's oak doors. Oh, I, I don't know. Do I have spruce or oak doors down? Spruce doors. Okay, I'm going to grab spruce doors to keep everything the same. Is it during nighttime already? Wow, I literally just slept as I started recording. Okay, so we're going to put this guy here. Put our sooty bee down. Actually, what does the sooty bee consume? I'm guessing it's just a flower. So if we look up sooty, right click, he consumes any type of flower. Do I have a flower on me? No, I do not. I'm going to have to go get a flower. Uh, are you good? You are kind of like just floating in the ceiling. I guess that's because he's trying to locate a flower. But hopefully I just put this in the middle here, pick you up and reset you here. You will detect this and pollinate it. Yes, you are. Right. The whole reason I'm getting the sooty bee going at the moment is I really want to get myself a dank. Why does this thing double click? If I can get myself a dank, I'd be able to like start voiding stuff I'm mining. The common black hole is not that difficult. So it's aluminium sheets and a machine frame, which of course we've made a lot of them before. The dank then requires us four sooty honeycomb blocks. So we're going to have to make those two. So I'm pretty sure if I just stick a repeater here and just run the redstone over to here, it should be long enough. Yep, there we go. And I've already put the, nope, put the scrape in. And it's good. So now we just leave that harvest away. The only thing we need to put now is access to our combs. So if I just come down here. Here's the edge come in two, and then right here will be the hopper. So if I just put this block there, grab ourselves our chest, vacuum hopper or factory hopper, and just upgrade the range and that's it. Now I can just uh, fill back in the hole here. Perfect. And how much, how are we doing on iron? Oh yeah, look how much iron and steel comb we have. It's a lot. Right, I think that's pretty much it with the bees. So, what we've done on stream. We've rebuilt the bridge. Yeah, I, I'm more happy with this style of bridge. I, I think it works out so much better than the other one. It has more design and detail. And I, other thing is, I was thinking of putting some Ars Nouveau lights in this place instead of these lanterns. But there is actually a quest reward in here, which I was going to make the, the glyph. But apparently, if you manage to make yourself a glyph press, or no, just a crystallizer, which is quite cheap. It just requires a lot of gold and arcane gold inlays. But you get the glyph of light as a reward. So I don't actually have to craft it, which I was preparing to craft it. But if I just go over here and just grab myself the crystallizer, so everything for it. So warding stone... So four warding stone, arcane, let me just look up gold. Do I have any arcane gold left over? I do. So give me all the arcane gold. Then we just need ourselves a source gem. So gem, just one of them. And we can put all this stuff away here. And now we just need to make ourselves four gold inlays like that. And then some nuggets. So if we just come back here to our uh, little enchanting apparatus here, put the 40s in, grab our warding stone. Oh no, it's only two warding stone, right? Then it's the two of these and then the source gem in the middle. There we go. And there we go, crystallizer. And now if we claim this reward, we get ourselves our glyph of light. And if we just right click it, uh, right click, I'm pressing right click, but it ain't working. Maybe I have to have the book in my hotbar. Yeah, there we go. Maybe I have to have the book. So if we open the book here, we can actually create our first spell. This is how you create spells. So we want to say we want it to be touch. So if we say touch light and just call it 
torch, for instance, we create it. Now it's linked to slot number one and we can have 10 slots in, I think, our novice book. And I think later on, then when you upgrade this book to like advanced or this is our novice, upgrade it to mage, and then we can upgrade it to arch mage and apparently then diet. I don't know what it means by that, but now if we just right click, boom, a light source. And of course, we can actually change the color of it too. And I think I have it bound to N at the moment. Yes. So we can just say purple. I don't know if we can visualize it, but just say purple and de increase some of the red and then save. How purple is this? Ooh, I want it a bit more purple. So increase the red even more. Okay, that just kind of looks a bit more pink. Maybe it's the green that's in it. Maybe just 50 50. Oh, wait, hang on. Nope, where am I going? Back in here. This max you zero there. Mmm, it's more of like a magenta. You know what? I think just the default purple here is good enough. Yeah, that's purple enough for me. So, pretty much all we have to do is just go in here and then just dot down some colors. So, if I just do like one every second block. Like that, we can just have like a row of like lights going down the center. And now if I go in here and change the color to maybe cyan, because I think this might have a, no, that's more of a green. Because uh, I don't think the, this blue is actually as blue as it looks. You see, they're kind of similar, but I guess it's fine. But yeah, it'll look like fairy lights in the ceiling and it just makes it look so much nicer. And we can just add whatever random colors we want later on. Like say if we want a red one right here instead. And then just have another one. We can have like a yellow, a green. um, Whatever color you want. Pretty much. So I might just stick another red at the end down here. Instead of this lantern. Boom. So that looks pretty cool. So the next thing we built on stream was finally our villager trading hall. I'm, I think there's still a lot more decoration I want to do with this, but I'm very happy with something I'd managed to do inside, and it's amazing. So here, I managed to trade all, every single villager that was there, bar the two farmers, and I think just one villager. But I think they have repopulated since, last, uh, since the stream. So all of them are back, so we have way more villagers to work with. But if we come inside now... And I have two iron golems outside. This is actually another apotheosis boss that spawned. I'm calling him head of security. His job is to stop any zombies from making their way inside. And he's just back up. Yeah. So what we've got here is a metal sliding door and some door sensors. That when detect a object or a player, it opens it as if it was a pressure plate. So in here, I've got my armor. So these guys are all set up to go. I was able to pick them up with soul gems. I found another couple soul gems. And I did actually capture the brute zombie. One of them that were in the sky. I don't know if I explained that last episode. Might have. But yeah, I captured him. And I'm not going to kill him. I'm going to set him up in his own private beehive. Because I think it's kind of cool that we have Apotheosis bosses as pretty much like farms. It would be pretty cool. Got two clerics here. I got a new one. And actually, while I'm here... Uh, do this book for me, please, because you will give me a holy sign instead of like an evil sign, which is something I need. And if I just dig it in here, unlock the sacred sign, which is this guy. And if we go to, I think, rituals and uh, not rituals, artifice or just natural laws, something, there's something in here that does it. And uh, maybe in here, I don't know, but I know you're supposed to do this for something good. Maybe I haven't unlocked the actual prayer just yet. So upstairs, you can hear a lot of humming. And there we go. This is what I'm so happy about. I managed to get myself like create conveyor belts to work as an escalator to go upstairs. And boom, look at all of the librarians we got. We got all of these guys on stream. So starting from the right, we got looting. We got stable footing. And stable footing is amazing, by the way, because if you're hovering... You dig super fast. So that's pretty cool. It makes clearing areas when you're flying really easy. 
like i'll show you now later a big huge area i cleared where we're going to start doing our magic so yeah stable footing we got efficiency seven vorpal reach these guys here all just sell me pay, uh, emeralds by giving them paper and books this guy gives me depth strider you give me endless quiver and i'm hoping with endless quiver if we use a bow with a lightning arrow because it does say it makes all arrows infinite so does that mean i have infinite lightning lightning arrows if it does that's amazing then we got ourselves knowledge of the ages we got capturing and insight now i do have the capturing on my sword right now and i also added the reach because this guy's got fortune five and vitality so yeah i've got a lot of villagers i'm still planning on decorating a lot more in here like of course i'm missing a few books up there and over there i'm thinking of adding some coffee tables or like other kind of decorations in the middle of the room just to fill it in because right now it's kind of plain just up here with all just the villagers like lining the walls but yeah and then we got an escalator on this side to bring us down I was going to fill up all these slots in as well, but of course we ran out of villagers, but they're all repopulated, so we might do it uh, on the next stream. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything covered right now. So, let's get to work on doing some more magic. And I think we're going to be doing Botania. So the plan is we're going to make ourselves an apostle, a, pet, a petal apothecary, get ourselves four pure daisies, and get some living wood going. Living wood is... Uh, made by, uh, yeah, so putting flourishing arch wood, which is just the green one. And of course, we have the green one, like right there. So I'm not too worried about the wood. So we can just like grab that and just plant a ton of it, which is fine. Here's our brute zombie bee. And then I've got an extra soul uh, gem in here to use if I want to. So I'll be doing that later on capturing the third, the second guy. But I think now... We have to go get ourselves a lot of Nautilus shells. Now, down in the comments, you did say I could just scan myself a Ammonite Ore, which is in here. I've got myself Embedded Ammonite, and that is found pretty much at, like, low levels at a beach. So if I just go to the ocean that's over here and scan the area, I should have a high chance of finding a lot of it. And if I can just mine up a ton of it, we should have plenty of uh, nautilus shells and also i think there's i saw somewhere I, I remember reading on the the wiki for this apparently i can automate nautilus shell gathering using drigamies from nerzavo 2 um i'm not sure i'm gonna have to research that more but apparently i can just automate the collection of them apparently they just grab it off some sea creatures anyway if we scan the area oh my god it is everywhere I guess I have some work to go. I might go down and at least grab another stack of it, which will give me two stacks of Nautilus shells. So, yeah, let me go grab a bunch of this. Okay, I only managed to get about half a stack, but that should still give me two stacks of it, which should still be more than enough to get started on what we want to do. Uh, wait, no, don't take out the torches. Leave those in there and take all of this back out. So I've got myself half a stack of it. So that's a whole stack of it, unless for some reason fortune it upgrades this uh, or gives me a higher chance of getting a lot more out of it i'm not sure but a whole stack of it should give me at least eight conduits so that should be more than enough because i only need one for the petal apothecary and i need four for the pure daisy so that's five so far and then later on we're probably going to be getting into blood magic then as well because i think that's the next one or actually should i get into nature's aura next because I think before I can do blood magic, I want to build an area in the undergarden where it's safe and I can do my blood rituals. So I think we might be building that on the stream now as well sometime. But for now, we're just going to be doing uh, Botania. And then, yeah, I think then we'll start in Nature's Aura. Because I think actually for blood magic, we're going to need Living Rock. And the only way to get Living Rock is using pure daisies, which come from using Sunstone. Now, you only get Sunstone by using Ferment, which you get by putting this on a natural altar, which is an altar that's in the overworld. And you make this by doing some lightning stuff. So I need a lot of Prismarine and Shiverstone. So Prismarine, I might need to go into a, what's it called? One of these sea temples and just mine it up. Like mine everything. So we might be doing one of these now soon. Okay, please stop sending it back. Thank you. 
So the other thing is we need to make Heart of the Seas. And hopefully I can make myself some Arcane Ashes. And using that, we just need Agile Lanterns, which require Agile Bricks, which is us Kelp and Clay. And just request me as much of this stuff as I can. It should give me two stacks of it. Yes, and do I just smelt that now? Yes, I do. So if I just chuck this in my redstone furnace over here to smelt quickly. And I think, yeah, I claimed some rewards. And it turns out I actually got an energy cell as a reward and some basic universal cable, which is really good. Now, I think, is this actually all running fully? Uh, are we actually generating power? Because this guy's not filling and this cable's not filling. But he doesn't seem to be losing power. So maybe we are generating enough. Uh, hopefully. But anyway, leave that build up. And let's get to work on making all of our harder seas. So we're going to need... Oh, no, we are going to need the Agula block. But let's make what we need next for it. So that's going to be some arcane ash. So click this. No, in here. The arcane ashes. We can just get this by throwing magical clay into a spirit fire. So if we just grab ourselves some flint and steel. Grab ourselves some dream fruit. And a magical clay. I'll probably grab like four of it. Since I'm probably going to need a good few of these things. And hopefully my mossy ring is enough to repair the clay. I might be able to add unbreaking onto it too. Right, from what I've also seen is fire from the spirit fire doesn't actually burn anything so i could probably just leave it down next to my house if i wanted to but i'm not really going to do that so i don't want anything bad to happen now this guy's going to require glowstone now i don't know if i have much glowstone uh hopefully i should have a bit let's see glowstone oh yeah we have plenty okay just give me about three four stacks of it i have a whole stack of agile blocks that should give me 16 heart disease to start with um I can craft them in here, so I'm not too worried. So. Drop it all in like that. Agile blocks. 16 of these guys should be more than enough to start. Um, Actually, you know what? We'll probably just get away with one. And here is the huge area I've cleared out. Now, I know it's very barren right now and there's no trees at all. I know I've taken everything down. But we will redecorate. Hopefully, the plan is I'm going to do my Botania setup over here and kind of expand into this kind of whole area here, this half. Wait, there's particles here? That means there's ma uh, aura here for nature's aura. Because I know there's some of, of the flowers right here, the sun blossoms. Oh. Maybe we should be doing nature's aura around back here. Since there's a lot of an aura. Hmm. That's something I might have to check out. I mean, we're only doing the basics of Botania today. So we can easily move it if we have to. The only thing, I'm going to need this eye. Which eye is it here? It's This is Botania eye. This guy here, the environmental eye. I'm going to need this to be able to see the level of aura in the area. How difficult is this to make? Twisted sapling. You get this. You can buy that from a market. Okay. Tree bark, silver, gold leaf, and a specter's eye, which you get from uh, meet your fight. Reveals nearby hostile mobs. You get it by dropping a phantom, phantoplasm. Six gold coins. You get phantoplasm by crafting a haunted bell to summon right we might be doing a boss soon probably way too early to do it anyway uh because I, I think one thing we did mention is to build a coliseum to fight these guys because there is actually a couple of bosses we can spawn up here if we go to i think adventure yeah there's like three different monsters we can fight we can make this haunted bell to summon this bell ringer we can make ourselves this Devil's Aint, which will spawn in the Fortuna, the Dame Fortuna, which requires Nether Quartz Honeycomb and Fortuna Extract, which requires us to get deep into blood magic. And then you have this Fossil Bait, which requires Raw Dweller Meat, which I haven't really found yet, but apparently you can make. Fish Bones, that's easy enough. We can just alter it inside the Nether. And any, any type of music disc from the Undergarden, maybe? Maybe it's anyone. No, it has to be one from the Undergarden. Right. We'll have to go find a bunch of them. 
But anyway, it, it, we won't be doing that anytime soon anyway. So let's just get ourselves our Ar arcane ashes so we can just light a fire. So dream fruit in the corner, light the fire and throw our four clay in. There we go. Arcane ashes. Why did some of them stack and other ones don't? I don't know. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll just do like 15. I think we're doing 16. So there now to make this guy, we have to put Aquamarines down then as well. So I need to go over here and grab myself some Aquamarines and just make sure I'm going to do this right. So it says to put the Agile block down, then the Aquamarine, and it should give us the heart of the sea. Okay, so let's put each one of these in. Like so, and then give it a Aquamarine. Well, they all activated, so I must have done something right. And after a couple of seconds, they should pop out Heart of the Seas. Oh God, it's like popping candy. Just aqua. Oh my God. That was way easier than I expected it to be. So 16 Heart of the Seas. I need to be very careful flying past these wires. I don't want to accidentally clip one and die. So we can just put the ashes away. We don't need them anymore. Now to make the conduit, if we come up here and conduit, bookmark that. Nautilus shells, lapis, flora, and source. Okay. So, why? Where's all my stuff? There it is. So, was it appetite? No, lapis and fluorite. So, I need myself a stack of fluorite, a stack of lapis, and a stack of source gems. It looks like I'm going to have to go mining for a lot more source gems later. Is that everything? I just need the Nautilus shells now, but I get those by using my pickaxe. So if I just put these in my offhand, I think just doing this gives you Nautilus shells. And now if we get more than 64, it means fortune definitely did take effect, but I don't think it will. Okay, yeah, it didn't. That's fine. We st should have enough anyway. So like, I think it's four to one. Yeah, so four of them. So we have 16 of them. Um... I don't know how many that is. <laughs> I know it's, we should have enough. I don't believe it'll like waste any if we don't have enough. Let's just say this is 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That can't be right. We can only do 13. Oh, wait, no, we can do definitely more. So 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, the whole stack of this is enough. And let's see, half a stack of lapis should also then be enough. So 16 right there. No, 16 goes here. So yeah, half a stack of lapis is enough. And if that's the case, then we only need half a stack of fluorite and a whole stack of these. So I can just put these away in here. Throw, actually, I need a, a source of lightning now, so... I'm going to need myself a bow and a lightning arrow. Wow, I have 69 arrows? Oh, damn. I didn't think I had that many. Uh, just any old bow will do. I only need to do this once anyway, since I'm going to be making all 16 in one shot. So hopefully now, if I just chuck them all down in the same spot and shoot this right here. 16 conduits. Perfect. So if I had a whole stack of those ammonite things, I might have been able to get myself 32 conduits, but 16 would be more than enough since we only need four for the actual uh, pure daisies. You know what? I could easily go with eight of them. We might try the eight. If we can make ourselves eight pure daisies, that'd be good. It just requires white petals. Yeah, that's actually not that bad. So all we need to now is to make the... Wait. Oh, Wandering Trader guy showed up. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Why do you always have to crumble my crops? What are you selling? Oh. In fire pods, mending, looting, unbreaking fire aspect. Uh, I mean, it's not a bad sword, but... I would rather my own. So, goodbye. I'm going to have to get a hole to fix that later. So for the Petal Apothecary, we need to do it inside our source thing, meaning we need cooking pots. Um, sh do I have all that? Put eight of these away. 
Give it a couple of seconds and request. Okay, I can request two. I only need two anyway. I'm going to make myself two personal apothecaries. That should be enough for now. So that just requires papyrus, lapis dust. So lapis dust. So one lapis. Grab myself at a hammer. Papyrus. Do I have any papyrus on me? No, I don't. I have it growing over uh, with my farm. What else do we need? Pytho grow and andesite pedestal. I need to make myself the andesite slabs. Okay, hang on. Andesite. Give me out a stack of that. I'll just make it by hand. Polished. Do that. This in the middle. This top and bottom. A few of these guys. That'll do. And hold on to it. So this in the bottom. These will go in the middle. Do these stack? No, they don't. If I'm making actually two, I need another lapis. Then I'm going to need myself pewter. So four pewter should be enough. Pytho grow. Uh, I'm going to need four of this plus another eight. So I'm going to need myself 12 pytho grow. Because I need it for the actual uh, pure daisies now as well. And I think all that's left now is the papyrus and the white petal flowers. So I have 16. I need four per each, so I need 32. So I need to grab out all these petals, grow them, and shear them. So shears, we had a pair of shears and some bone meal. We had a stack of bone meal. And we should be good to go. All I need now is the papyrus, which is growing over here. And uh, we should have plenty of it. I think about 8,000 of it. Oh, yeah, plenty papyrus. And I think we have enough source in here. This jar is 50% full, so we should have plenty for now. So we just need to put down two of these. A cooking pot. Actually, we'll put the cooking pot down last. Crush this. So you go here. The pewter inlays and the papyrus. So one, two, pewter inlay here and here. And then I think it was the pedestal in the bottom. And then right click with the cooking pot. There we go. Oh, I wish this thing had like the... Right click with an empty hand to repeat recipe. That'd be cool if it did have that. But anyway, just repeat the process again. It's not actually that bad. Uh, there we go. Good to go. And now the pure daisies. We need to make this now. So we have ourselves our uh, flower or petal apothecaries. Uh, so we're just doing it over here. For now. So we'll just. Oh, the flame went out. I guess it only go. Maybe it should only stay lit when it's on netherrack. Maybe I thought it would just stay permanently lit. Apparently not. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have access to a sink yet, so I can't just put it down randomly and then just grab from a sink. How bad is a sink? Oh yeah, we need to get deep into astral sorcery and a bit deeper into botania and nature's aura. So yeah, that would be a while. Let me go get myself two buckets to make an infinite water source. Okay, I should be able to just say, do it like right here. Just put the water underneath the block there. Infinite water source. Clear the area. And now if I just put this petal apothecary right there. Grab our flowers. And then just plant them like this. Okay. And then just get the bone meal we have. And grow the flowers up. That should be all of them. Pair of shears. Break them all. Oh, apparently I don't have shapeless mode on. It's whatever though. 16 white flowers, compress them into 4, full 64. So divide that. That's actually all of them. But actually, wait, no, we're only using half a stack. So yeah, there we go. Grant. So all we have to do now is with our Pytho Grow flowers and conduits, come over here now with a bucket. I think once we craft our first one, we should be able to just right click with an empty hand to repeat the process eight times. So one, two, three, four. One and two. I forgot actually we're going to need seeds. I'm going to have to go get some seeds. All right, got the seeds. Chuck them in. There we go. Now grab a bucket of water. Repeat and throw the seeds. So I should be able to throw the seeds there. And then just do this. And I think this is the last one now. Oh, no, it's still tree. And this should be the last one. There we go. We got ourselves eight pure daisies. So I need this green tree. So let's grab ourselves some. Um, damn, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a vexing log. So sapling. 
we should be able to grab out some green ones. Or not. Am I all out of green saplings? I think I am. Luckily enough, we do have an archwood forest all the way up north. Uh, where is it on this thing? Archwood forest. If I could just fly around here and chop down a bunch of green trees. I do not see a single green tree. Where are all the green trees? Ah, down here. If we're going to be automating this setup for living wood and living uh, rock later, I think I might need to set up an archwood log farm. Yeah, I feel like I might need to do that. I got 30 saplings from it, so I could just grow a bunch of them for now. And I'll just chop these down later when they fully grow. That should probably be enough. Um, what is it? Flourishing archwood for now. So all I have to do now is just put down a pure daisy. So let's actually run a row of area of the logs first. So if we do something like this, I just quickly flew home to get myself another my diamond wand so I can do this. Put them down, grow it up, and then you should be able to see all these white particles. Oh, wait, hang on. Never mind. No, 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 not this log. I forgot. Actually, you need to compress it into the solid log. So just craft it in a crafting grid like this. Oh, wow. Use 40 at three. That's such a waste of logs. But I guess if you have a big farm it is going, it's not really going to matter. Okay, now if I do this, there's all your white particles. And actually, after a bit of time, these will eventually turn into living wood. I have four more flowers left over, so I can only use this now for turning into living wood once I get it. So if I, or not living wood, living rock once I get it. But of course, we're going to need the actual uh, sunstone. So I think we might try and aim for this now next episode, making ourselves our na nature's altar. Now, the only other thing is an ice charge. That's going to require blizz powder. But lucky enough, since we caught, caught ourselves a frosty bee, we can get it as a byproduct from the comb. So I'm not too worried about that now. And actually just looking at the recipes here, we need a token of joy, which requires the wooden stand. So we need to do a ritual of this, which is glimmering pink flowers, which is just a flower and a bit of glowstone. Uh, the bottle of sunlight, just right clicking anywhere where there's or uh, in the overworld or a tomb and uh, this action removes aura from the area can be automated using the dispenser and you can see there all of this has turned into living wood break it grab out a wand and repeat eventually we can put constructors and deconstructors to like infinitely build this but that's only once we get into refined storage so i'm gonna end it there hope you all enjoyed and if you did don't forget to hit that like button subscribe if you're new hope to see you on the next episode so without further ado goodbye